Hi, I'm Dr. Charlie Peterson. I'm the author of Dude, Where's My Profit? The Accounting Finally Makes Sense mini course. If you're not familiar with my program, please go to my website, uh, www.dudewheresmyprofit.com. Uh, there is a free uh, course overview that you can view uh, and you can understand uh, how I approach the, the teaching of accounting. Today I wanted to talk about, in contrast, accrual and cash accounting. These are two confusing areas for many people, but I think I can get you straightened out by, uh, first of all, talking about cash flow categories and then contrasting them with uh, the accrual accounting categories and then do a few uh, what are called transactions, transactional analysis, where we compare uh, the impact on the income statement and the cash flow statement for these two uh, systems of accounting. Now, if you have not uh, seen my first video on general cash flow, I might, uh, might suggest looking at that. That provides some information and this is going to go from there. Now, cash flow is divided up into three categories, operations, investing, and financing. Now, operations has to do with your reason for being in business. It represents the cash flow categories for uh, revenues and expenses uh, that the business encounters. And remember, these are cash flow now. Cash sales and collections of accounts receivable re represent cash in. Paying operating expenses and interest expense are examples of cash flow out. Now, the next category, let's jump down here to financing. Financing is where the business gets its cash other than from operations. There are two general sources of financing. One, borrowing, say from the bank, or selling uh, ownership called stock. Those are the two ways they finance the business. And then the cash coming in from the financing is then used to invest within the business. And what, what does the company invest in? They invest in long-term assets, for example, or oftentimes they'll invest in the stock of other businesses. So we, we, we want to now contrast our cash accounting and our accrual accounting. Now up to this point, we've been dealing with the accrual accounting and the income statement and the balance sheet are made using the accrual system of accounting because it makes sense of the numbers to the owner. Now in accrual accounting, we define revenue as what we earned in the business. It's our reason for being in the business. And um, you earn revenue, say, by uh, collecting fares as a taxi driver or uh, professional fees as an accountant. Now, the neat thing about earned means that it is not necessarily the flow of cash which defines revenue under the accrual system. If you provide a service and have completed the service and are entitled to the money, even though you haven't re re received it yet, yeah, that you would then classify that as revenue. Now, likewise, expense is what we use up to earn the revenue. Sometimes we use up cash, that's understandable, but other times we use up oil and gas and supplies and an employees' time and so forth. So we define an expense under the accrual system as what we used up. Now, cash accounting, as we just said, is revenue is defined as cash received from the operations of the business, and the expense is cash paid from the operations of the business. Now, I want to contrast the two using a series of transactions here. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show their impact on the income statement and the cash flow statement so that we can see this is the, this portion of the uh, information here is based on the cash accounting system. This is on the accruals accounting system, okay? So let's take the first transaction here. We earn service revenue for cash of $400. First thing you want to ask yourself, did that affect your revenue? Yes, you earned the right to it. So we'll put 400 here. Now, obviously if it affected revenue, it didn't affect expense, so I'm going to make and put an NA, not applicable there. Now, think about the income statement. If expenses remain constant and revenue went up, net income would also go up by $400. Now let's see what the impact is on the cash flow category. Uh, first of all, it's going to be part of operations. 
because we earned the money. And it's going to be an O plus because you received $400. Operations plus. So we'll put it over there. Now in this particular case, the transaction affected both the income statement and the cash flow statement. Earned service revenue on account, $200. All right, well, let's see. On account, we measured, we have, we have, we have completed the job and we've earned $200. So therefore, in the income statement, we've earned the right to the money. So we'll put this here. And we'll put an NA here for the expense. Now, if revenue went up by 200 and expenses remain constant, net income would go up by 200. Now, what about my cash flow category? Well. If you earn service revenue on account, there is no flow of cash. So we have an NA and an NA over here. See, now here's a transaction that affects the income statement, but not the cash flow statement. Let's try this one here. Collect accounts receivable $100. Well, if you have accounts receivable, you've already recorded the revenue previously. All right, so that does not affect our revenue here. So we'll put an NA across the board for this. Now, a collection of accounts receivable for a cash flow statement is part of operations. So we're going to put an O plus here for $200. All right, let's take a look at the next one. We pay the rent expense $300. All right. Did that transaction affect your revenue? Nope. Did it affect your expenses? Yes, it did. What happened? Your expenses went up by $300. And if you look at the income statement and revenue is held constant, but expenses go up by 300, then net income, I'm going to put this in parentheses, goes down by 300. Now, obviously there is some cash involved in this transaction and we needed to pay the rent expense to operate our business. So this is going to be an O minus for $300. All right, let's look at number five. We purchase supplies on account, $90. Well, let's see. Supplies, was that is that affect our revenue? Nope, does not. Does that affect our expenses? No, We all we did was purchase a current asset, NA, NA, NA. And when we buy something on account, cash is not involved. So for cash flow statement, it's going to be NA and NA as well. So here's a transaction that doesn't affect either one. Number six, we pay the balance in accounts payable, $90. Uh, it, if, an, if a number is in accounts payable, it's already been, uh, some transaction took place earlier, but accounts payable is, does not affect my revenue, does not affect my expenses, and does not affect my net income. Now, we pay the balance in accounts payable, uh, we need, usually we buy things like supplies uh, and on account, so this is part of operations. So we're going to make this an O minus, um, and we're going to make that for $90. All right, number seven. We purchased a long-term asset for cash, $500. Did that affect my revenue? Nope. Did that affect my expenses? Nope. Did that affect my in, uh, net income? Obviously not. Now, what category are we going to put a long-term asset in? Because there was a cash flow for this. Uh, don't forget, when we make an investment, uh, it goes into investing. And it's going to be a minus because you're paying the $500 out. Let's try number eight. Pay dividends $100. Now, did that affect my revenue? No. It's not anything I earned. Did it affect my expenses? Nope. Now, when you pay dividends, that's part of financing. All right, so we're going to put this as a F minus for $100. It's all part of financing related to capital stock. Number nine, we borrowed 900 from the bank. Did that affect my revenue? Nope. Did that affect my expenses? Nope. Did that affect my net income? Nope. 
Now, if we borrowed 900 from the bank, that means that cash has flowed into the business. And when you borrow money, that becomes financing. So this is going to be an F plus for $900. Number 10, sell capital stock for $500. Does that affect my revenue? Well, it has nothing to do with revenue, nor does it have anything to do with expenses. But it has everything to do with financing. This is one of the ways a business finances it, its business, so it's going to be an F plus for $500. Number 11, now we're going to pay back the bank $200. Well, when we when we borrowed the money, we said it was F minus. Now when we're pay um, I'm sorry, F plus. Now when we're paying back the bank, it's going to be an F minus. But it does not affect my income statement whatsoever because no revenue or expense was incurred. So I'm going to put this under F minus for $200. And finally, we make an adjustment for supplies, $50. As you recall, if you go to the end of the accounting period, there's a number of accounts that have to be uh, brought up to date by making an internal adjustment. This one happens to be supplies and supplies expense. So what we're doing is we're recording an expense. So that's not affecting my revenue. We are recording the expense of $50. And that's going to make that my net income good. If, if revenue remains constant. Expenses go up. My Net income goes down. Now the adjustment for supplies did not affect cash whatsoever. Okay? Now, if you were to take these numbers that you prepared here, you've got some revenue, you've got your expenses, you could calculate your net income. Revenue minus expenses, net income. Likewise, you can take all of these numbers here and build a cash flow stat statement. You start out with O plus, O minus, I minus, I mean I plus, I minus, and F plus, F minus, you would add them up and then you would have the, f the flow of cash for this current period. Okay? Please let others know about uh, my website. If you have any suggestions of topics, please let me know. And thanks for viewing.